Okay, we're going to have a look at uh, how we can execute code in Smalltalk. And here we are back in our image. We have a transcript and a new kind of a thing called a workspace. You can open a workspace by just bringing up the system menu here, saying workspace, and you get a workspace. And what this will allow us to do is execute the code that I'm about to show you um, in a separate space from the transcript, because we're trying to do things to the transcript in these examples. We're asking the transcript to do something. and in this particular example, here's a bit of small talk code. I'm going to ask the transcript to show me the string hello transcript. So if I do it, then I see that there. If we look at the menu here that I just brought up, we can see that there are a number of options for executing code. And we're going to go through the following. We're going to go through do it, print it, inspect it, explore it, and debug it. What we do when we want to run some small talk code is to select the code we'd like to execute and then we run it using one of those options. Each of those options will take this string, it's just a string at this point, and will compile it and it will then execute it. In the case of do it, it will just execute it. And in the case of the first example, running the code causes something to be displayed in the transcript. And there we go, so we can do it as many times as we like. Now, if we remember our class, it will also talk to the transcript. And here we are. We put a method in here called do your thing, transcript show hello world. So let's just close that one down again and create a new instance of our class. And we're going to do it as well. Do it, do it, do it. Now, all of these pieces of code here have the side effect of actually writing to the transcript. There's another piece of code at the bottom here, time now. I'm talking to the class time and saying time now. Um, and if I do it on that, I don't seem to get anything. Nothing's happening. What we need to understand is that every time we run a piece of small talk code, it is compiled and it executes. And we don't see something for free. We actually have to ask for something to happen. The first two examples actually explicitly ask the transcript to show something. But the bottom example doesn't explicitly do anything other than create a new instance of the class time. What we get back every time we run a piece of small talk code is a single object. So in the case of the transcript, if I want to see the object I get back, I can, ins I can print it. Let's print it first. Now what this will do is it will run the code and it will then ask the one object that gets returned to produce a string representation of itself. So in this case, we can see we see hello transcript, the code ran, and the transcript is returned and it chooses to represent itself as transcript. If we do the same thing with our object, we say print it, what we get back is the default string, which is just a class name. Now we can change that. If I bring up the system browser again here, go down to hello message, and I can now put in a different method. Print on. Now what happens now is that when we print it, I'm a hello message, we see the string that I specified in the print on. So any object can choose to represent itself as a string in any way that it chooses by just implementing a method. In this case, we put print on in there. If we move down to the last example that we've got here, time now, if I say print it, a time object chooses to represent itself by telling us the time, which is fairly handy, really, if you think about it. Jolly good, right, so moving on then, We've understood do it and print it. We're now going to have a quick look at inspect it. Let me just get these results out of the way so they aren't cluttering things up. So if I inspect it, I get a different kind of a window, a different kind of an interface open. We aren't just going to get a bit of string coming out here. We're going to actually get a window opening onto the object that's returned. And in this case, for the first example, I'm inspecting the transcript. So I'm looking inside of it. It's kind of slightly rude to actually look at the insides of an object. We should be talking to them and being polite. But an inspector lets you open it up and see inside. If I see inside of our class here, hello message, what we see is that there actually aren't any interesting instance variables. This itself and all instance variables doesn't show you anything more. Um, 
that's just because we've chosen not to have any instance variables in our class yet. If we look at time, it's a bit more interesting in the inspector. We actually get to see the seconds and the nanos. Nanos are zero for this particular implementation for this particular time, but there's the number of seconds represented in the time. So we're looking inside at how time chooses to implement itself. Right, so now let's look at the Explore. Explore is something which is offered in some small talk implementations. In Faro, which is where we are now, it's, it's basically a tree view looking inside of the object. So you can drill down, follow the object through its structure. Other implementations of Smalltalk have graphical um, explorers, which are quite handy. Um, now if we explore our object again, very boring, nothing there. It just says what it is. And look, there's that print string again, just to uh, get a string representation of what the object is. And if we look inside of time now, again, if we explore it, we can see we have seconds and so on and so forth. Jolly good. So. Come here, you. The last thing will be not just doing the code, but debugging it. Now, there's, the debugger is a fantastic tool in Smalltalk, and we'll be talking about that extensively later on. But for now, we can see that when we compile the code and run it, <clears throat> um, we actually get inside of a debugger, and we can see in the debugger, here is the code which is being executed. And I can do things like stepping over that code or into the code. So if I go over and into, here is the implementation of the method that's being run. And I'm just going to say proceed now. And you can see at the top here that it just runs the code as normal, except we actually get to step through and debug it. OK, so we've quickly gone through what do it does. That just runs the code. Print it will print a string representation of the object which is returned by the code. Inspect it, we'll open a window on it, and explore it opens a more sophisticated way of looking at it. And that's it, really. So what I want to show you now is that these things exist pretty well in all small talks. So let's hop over to VisualWorks. So here is a VisualWorks transcript, just the same as the transcript we saw in Faro, but a little bit more sophisticated. And here is a workspace, again, the same as in Faro, perhaps a little bit more sophisticated. And we can pop our code in here. Ooh, paste. There we go. And we can do the same kinds of things. So if I just do it, do it, let's do it. The transcript shows that. If I do a print it, I get to see something else. The transcript in VisualWorks chooses to represent itself in a different way. It chooses to show us something about its internals. But nonetheless, all that's happened is we get a string back. It's just a rather larger string than we got in the other example. If I now open an inspector on this, we get a different kind of inspector again, a little bit more sophisticated. But we can see inside of here that this is what a transcript knows. It's a slightly more sophisticated kind of transcript than the one we found in Faro, but it's still just a transcript and it's still just an inspector, albeit a more sophisticated one. Our object behaves in very much the same way. If we do a print it, we get a hello message and if we inspect it we can see that there's not really very much inside of it because there's no instance variables the last example here time now we can see is a time all the same and there's the string representing it and we can see the implementation is rather different here hours minutes and seconds but nonetheless if we print it we still get the time out right moving right along let's have a look at another small talk now here we're in a small talk called Gemstone. And this small talk actually is a database as well as being a small talk. So we can persist objects in here. But that's not the point at the moment. We're just going to run a print it. And in here we're going to say date today. Print string percent. And then we get the date today. So that's just an example of a command line kind of small talk. But the, uh, the key thing here is that the ideas of doing it and printing it are just the same. And lastly, I want to show you a small talk running inside of a web browser. And if we, so this is Amber. You can go, go to the Amber website and have a look. If we open up the class browser here, we can see that we've got our class implemented inside of this. I just dropped it in, just, just brought the code in. Um, and in a workspace, we can do all the same kinds of things. So 
there's a workspace it's just a tabbed interface here so it's a it looks completely different but really the ideas are the same so I'm going to select this code in here now and at the bottom we can see we have these various options so I'm going to say do it and over in the transcript hello transcript if I take our our class now I can get it to do its thing do it and again over in the transcript I get to see the output from that if I get time now and say do it it's just the same we don't actually get to see anything okay but if I inspect it what do I get nothing let's try date today maybe that's not implemented here let's try this guy date today print it oh, there we go we get a date today so date looks like in this particular implementation of small talk date performs the roles of dates and times but the issue the point I wanted to make here is that there is a, a lot of um, consistency in the way that these small talks work you can find the do its and print its and inspect its all over the place throughout these different things okay so what we're going to do is go back and look here's gemstone that's visual works and here's faro and in all of these examples what we've been looking at is how to run code and we've seen how to do it let's just execute the code print it which means show in the workspace a string representation of the result of evaluating the code inspect it means open a window on the results of evaluating the code so it's an inspector on an object explore it as a more detailed way of looking at things usually a navigation visualworks actually has a graphical one which is quite nice um, and debug it which means open a debugger on the code and step through it and explore what's going on as the code executes there you go